Hey everybody, Jochen Haydn here, and I'm back with the 16 January 1942 Comet Replay and Intel Analysis. So the focus areas today are going to be in China. We have the uh, result of the uh, paratrooper invasion at Henyang and whatever he's planning to do at Changsha. So I'm expecting good action on this turn, so let's see what happens here. Okay. Let's see what we got in store for us on the 16th of January, 1942. All right, so he, pick, he picks up a dot base there in the, what is it, the Marshall Islands? No, uh, Gilbert Islands, perhaps. I don't know. All right, so he's just unloading some supplies at Guam and Talad. Oh, okay, so Grayling takes a shot but misses here. On a sub chaser, which is a very small target. I'm not surprised that he missed. Uh, four torpedoes wasted, though. That, I think he could have done better with that. Looks to be a lot of enemy ship activity there. So he's coming in for another round at Port Blair. Interesting. He's sticking around. So I know for a fact having done these in the past myself they typically run out of the bulk of their ammo on the first bombardment and the second one tends to be not as good because they use so much of the ammo the first time around so you'll see here it, it wasn't well it was effective uh, more so okay well i'll take all that back it was more effective than i thought it would be and this time around he does damage some catalinas all right so seeing some movement here in the uh, in um, Sumatra finally. Kuching. These are bases that I I plan to give up anyway, early on. So no night engagements so far. Hmm. So now we know where the I-19's at, huh? Let's see if we get anything. Let's see what we get here. So this is one of those British Corvette type ships here. And they don't mess around with the anti-submarine work. These are dangerous for subs. This is deep water though, so it's, it's unlikely that we're going to do anything to it. But we definitely scared it a bit. I-19, huh? Oh, he's inching closer to uh, Los Angeles, it looks like here. All right, so we don't do any damage, but we do get a good fix on where his subs are kind of located now. So I'm going to write that down, 219.86. So we know to avoid that hex, right? We're going to have to go around that because this is a straight shot from L.A. south. So I'm not surprised that he's here. But we, we're going to have to maneuver around that. Interesting. All right, here come the uh, the daily annoying airstrikes by Japan and China. Oh, big raid at Port Moresby here. Hmm. Doesn't really accomplish much, but it's just a reminder that he's still around and he has Nels at Port Moresby now. Okay, softening up right at uh, Clark. I wish he would just take it already. There's no reason not to. Okay, he's softening up the uh, runway. Cheng Shaw. These, these attacks are not... I'm not worried about... This. Look at this. Now he's softening this place up. Is he going to do another drop here too? Yep. I guarantee you he is. Yeah, we take a lot of casualties there. He's using all of his bombers now. He's so desperate. He's looking for anything he can to break the stalemate in China. But you know what? At least he found something. 
He did find a weak spot in our defenses, so I, I get him credit for that. And he's trying his darndest to slow us down here. A raid here in Sinkawang, because he's probably going to attack here again. Yeah, he's another raid. Okay. Leftover raid coming in here. He might be trying to, to, to land here as well. Although it looked like he committed... Oh. Oh. 36 nates. 36 nates, huh? Well, let's see what these guys can get done here. Be nice if we can get some of these Tojos taken out. They keep getting damaged. Oh! Hmm. Alright, tell you what. We could be here all day watching this. Let's just get to the to the goods. Let's see what happens. It's like he had all of his Tojos on cap here. Alright, let's see what happens here. So we get through. Oh, Mutsu! Oh, I think we're getting something here. Nice! Okay. Alright. So, it wasn't the best raid ever, but, you know, it... We, we got something done here. We put two bombs into the Mutsu, which I believe was already damaged from from being in the Dutch East Indies a while back. So this should set it back a while on repairs. Now we know where it's at, right? And we also get a bomb hit into the Shiokaze. And some leftover stragglers making their way in here. They make it through. Let's see what else they're going to get done. Another... Ooh! Okay. Okay, so we get a bomb into the Nachi. So now we know that the Nachi and the Mutsu are in Hong Kong. Interesting. Uh, I doubt it's going to... That By no means will it sink, but it just causes some damage. That, that helps us. Well, it could have been better, but, you know, I don't mind putting some damage on those ships. Nah, he's sweeping around. No, no casualties there. He's just looking for something to do with his bombers now. Interesting. Okay. Let's see if we get any ground combat here. That's worth anything. Wow, really? Hmm. Let's see what he's got here. I don't I don't think this is enough. I don't think this is enough for him. Let's see. Wow, I mean, I'm taking more casualties here than I thought I would, for sure. Uh, uh, definitely. 
so what's the adjusted here? It's it's not really that well in our favor. I think it's the vehicles here. Okay, so we definitely get the better of this. Um, a lot of casualties for sure, but I I'm surprised he's actually attempting something like this. I didn't think he would actually try to break through. But what's more surprising to me is the uh, is the adjusted not being better. Because we have good terrain. We have fortification. You know, uh, the disparity between the assault values are not that high. So I'm actually shocked that this wasn't better. That being said, we do knock down a lot of his combat power, so I, I'm hoping that he can't sustain attacks like this for long. I'm really surprised. I didn't think he would go for something this bold. Okay, I mean, you guys are seeing it, right? This was not a, a successful attack for him. I think he may have maybe overcommitted a bit here. All right, now let's see what happens in Guam. Oh, we hold out. We hold out in Guam. And we definitely get the better of this. So I don't know if he can do those that many more times. He gave us too much time. He gave us too much time at Guam to prepare for this. So Talad is definitely going to fall. Alright. And then Sinkawang. Let's see. Is he? I think he's got us this time around. Yep, he did get it. Now we take quite a few casualties with that. LM bombardment. Oh, this, this is me now. So this is me feeling him out to see what exactly he's got here. So what I'm seeing here are... Two complete divisions. Why these are split up, I don't know. Maybe because he started upgrading devices and they don't they're not compatible anymore. So two two divisions and two brigades, one mortar battalion. This was just a probing attack for me. I was just curious what he had. So eleven ninety one to twenty four hundred. So I am not going to be trying to dislodge him at all. Um but now I know that he's got nothing that can hurt us, so that's fine with me. Whew, wow, what a turn. Chang Sha, wow, I did not think he would do that. Uh, but he did. So now we need to figure out what we got to do to keep Chang Sha a solvent. Because if we lose Chang Sha, we're finished. Like the whole front will collapse. Oh, there we go. You guys seen that, right? Looks like we got a British carrier in um we got a British carrier in in uh what's it called? Yeah, India now. So maybe we can actually go on the offensive or try to put up a little more of a fight than we have been. Finally, we have something we have something in something in India to, to give us a fighting chance at at um what is it called? Burma. Let's take a look at the intel. This will be very interesting. Okay, guys. Let's take a look at the situation. It's getting wild in China. I like this ominous music, too. All right. So, we'll start with aircraft losses for this last turn. It's 4-1. to one. He lost one Tojo shot down. I somehow lost a P-38 in air-to-air, -air, which I... Not really understanding how that works. Interesting. I, I I don't recall the P38s being engaged by anything, but we will. I don't know. We'll look into that. That doesn't make any sense. Looks like a C47 crash doing a transport mission 
and one B-17 shot down. Also showing a Catalina 1 lost to uh, Ops. Okay, looking at the top pilots, we did have one KA today. Not entirely sure where that's from. Also one missing in action. Probably the B-17 pilot. That would be my guess. Yeah, that's basically all we can we can uh, glean from this. It could be also this B-17 pilot here, Harper. KIA with one kill. I, that might be it. Not sure. Looking at the army loss rate today, it did tick up a bit for both of us. Uh, we did lose more squads on the Chinese side this term, but our squads are worth less than his. And he had his, a lot of disabled units at Changsha, so much so that I would be surprised if he can continue that attack, at least this turn. So we've held him for now, but I don't know how long we'll be able to do that. Ship sunk last turn, none, which I'm fine with that. We've lost enough. Okay, taking a look at the SIGINT. Scrolling through here. Not seeing anything overly important right now. All right, so let's take a look at the combat report because I like to look at this now every turn because it shows you about your mines. So it does appear that the jig is up with the mines at Singapore. He knows they're there. So at this point, we're not going to be able to be laying mines in there. He's going to know we're coming. And he's probably laying mines himself now. So we don't go in there and start trying to do it ourselves. We'll probably hit one of his mines. So we are staying out of Singapore Harbor. It is too dangerous. Okay. Let's go ahead and just start analyzing the situation. And in China, things just got spicy. So, starting from the top, we don't really have any activity going on here. It's a stalemate here where neither of us are, are going to budge. So, we, we pinned each other to this location. I'm not moving anything out of there, and neither is he. So, I guess that's fine. We both tie up forces that we could be using elsewhere. It's kind of a stalemate. Now, here's where it's getting really crazy. So as you know, he paratrooped into here last turn. And now he attacked us here at Changsha. And we can look at the actual combat report from this to talk more about it. Uh, this is what he came at us with. A lot of tanks, a lot of guns, a lot of troops. But we held and we inflicted more casualties than he did to us. Now we did lose a fort level, but we got a few more to go. And the adjusted is still in our favor. And looking at the the disabled unit count, I feel like he is more damaged than we are at this point. So I think if we were attack again if he attacks again next turn, this adjusted will be more in our favor. We only lost about three hundred A V. Where I feel like he lost a lot more. So you know, that is what it is. I think we can hold here for the time being, but it, it's definitely a lot closer than I thought it would be or should be. I really thought we would have better performance than that. But I think the amount of tanks that he's bringing into this fight are what's really hurting us right now. So we did a bombardment attack here, so we know exactly what he's got. These numbers are relatively accurate. He's got two full divisions and some supporting and two full brigades and a mortar unit. That is definitely not enough to take us out of here. But it's more than we can take him out with. All right. Down here, we basically have our forces in place here. And much will determine what happens next turn in this hex. We must win here. If we can dislodge this Japanese unit, we have a very strong chance of getting into Kukong and completely destroying his units there. I really hope we can do that. That will set him back drastically. So he did get an Akansian behind us. He'll take that. And it looks like he's also moving another unit up from uh, either Amoy or Chow Chow. But I don't really care because it's not... You know what I'm saying? It's not that critical to our needs. But we must win here because now we're kind of isolated. 
So we're going to run out of supply just like he will. So I'm really hoping that next turn we can be victorious here. So we can dislodge that and march these units into Kukong and give these guys the final solution. All right, that's China. A lot's gonna have, a lot will depend on what happens here next turn. It's crucial, crucial that we win here. If we don't, I don't know how long we can sustain this southern operation. All right, in Burma, he did a he did attack us again at Port Blair. It did a, a considerable amount of damage to the base. Uh, that's kind of out of action for the time being. Uh, he also hurt the base force pretty bad to the point now where it's not going to be sustainable long term. He also damaged our supplies. So Port Blair it might be time to evacuate out of here. I just don't see it being something we can keep going long term. It did, things did quiet up a bit down here in the Strait of Malacca though. He did, he's landing here. He'll take this base. He also has carriers here, and that's that same light carrier task force that we've been seeing, or at least I think it is. Maybe he was standing clear of Singapore until we got the mines out of there. Or he got the mines out, but he did now, so he's going to probably hit an air and rearm that. He landed at Kuching. He will most definitely take this base. He also took his busted us out of Sinkoing, which gives him a pretty decent uh, airfield to be attacking us with, but he's going to have to repair it. And he damaged it pretty bad. He also took the base here. In Dutch East Indies. But that's basically it. We haven't seen much activity down here. Other than up in Sumatra. And around here. Been pretty quiet. These guys need to be careful. Because I'm not sure what this unit's doing. I'm trying to get another supply convoy into Cagayan while I have the chance. Try to top off the supplies here on the at Mindanao. Because pretty soon we won't be able to do anything with that. Still waiting for him to attack us at Clark Field. He's just hanging out. Waiting for something to happen here. We were victorious at Guam last turn. He did not take it. And honestly, I don't think he brought enough troops. Because we basically took no casualties. And he took some. Uh, we have fortification and we have supply. So... I I don't know. I think he's I think he may have come in a little bit too soft here. And we also got this <laughs> we also got this supply ship out of Guam too. So that's gonna have pretty smooth sailing all the way up to um ADAC where I can dump those supplies there and keep the ship for operations in Alaska. So that's pretty cool. The wake is starting to run out of supplies, so I'll need to make a decision soon to abandon it or to try to get more supplies out there, which is dangerous. Nothing happening out here in Perth, so we got supplies coming in, which are going to be very much appreciated. At Port Moresby this last uh, round, he hit us with a... Um, Hit us with the bombing raid, and he was targeting the airfield. He did not do much damage at all to us, but again, I know what his, I know what he's gonna do. So he attacked us. So he thinks he's gonna bait us into a cap trap, which we're not falling for again. So watch, watch, watch. Next turn, he's gonna come in with a sweep, and he'll find nothing there. So we're gonna let him hang low there. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to let him sweep my cap. So we'll go ahead and just hang out, let him do his bombing raids, and then. We'll go. We'll reevaluate what we want to do from there after that. Everything else in the Solomons is pretty quiet right now. We did see some some talk of ships near a uh, thousand ship bay, some sightings around here. We have this task force, which I believe would be just be an ASW patrol. Let me think. Is there anywhere else that we have activity that's noteworthy? No, not really. Oh, you know what? I forgot to talk about the bombing raid on Hong Kong. So I sent my B-17s down there, and we found out that he's got quite a few fighters in cap. But more importantly, we know that the Mutsu and the, Nach the Nachi are here at 
Hong Kong and maybe something else. So we definitely put a couple bombs into the Mutsu and we got a bomb into the Nachi and also one of his APDs. I don't think any of those ships are in danger of sinking this turn. But it's still good to know that the Mutsu is still damaged from its encounter with ABDA down here over a month ago. And we just set it back again. So we know the Mutsu's kind of pinned in Hong Kong for a while. I don't think I'm going to repeat that attack because it's he, he'll know to expect it. He'll probably move more uh, air assets down there to protect it next turn, but that's fine. We did what we needed to do, and we only lost one aircraft doing it, so that's that's not a bad trade at all. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So we need to hold in Changsha for sure, and we need to win here. These are very important battles that must win next turn. If we don't win here, we are, we're in trouble. That's all I got to say. We're in trouble if we don't win here because we're not going to be able to sustain operations down there indefinitely. So wish us well next turn. I'm going to tell you right now the attack is coming. And I don't care if no Lodric hears this or not. Not that he's listening because he, I already have the turn. So he can't do anything to change it. He's not dumb though. He knows what we're trying to do. So expect the bomber hordes to be coming in here. But this terrain is good for that for us. So let's hope we can win this engagement and we can you know, get something happening at Kukong. Because if we take this out, we get in here, this guy is dead. He's done for. All right, that's all we got. Wish me luck, guys. See you soon.